Hey there, and welcome back to the Virtual Cafe for another coffee combo about business finances. I'm your host, Kerry Zarb, and I am joined by Kim White. We invite you to join us at our table with your favourite brew. Let's pull up our chairs and get into today's episode. Come on, let's go. It's coffee time. Hey, Kim. Hey, Kerry. What are we going to have today? Mm, I want a cafe mocha, latte, grande. Uh, I was trying to think of all of caramel. I want all of it today, Carrie. All of it. And I think actually you guys refer to something called extra whip. Ooh, I want extra, extra whip. And that's like the, the cream on top, yeah? Yes, ma'am. That sounds pretty cool. Well, whatever you're getting, Kim, you get one for me as well. I'll, I'm game. You got it, Kerry. Woo! Well, Kim, we have a little bit of a serious conversation to have today because I believe there could be people in the world that just want to outsource their finances. Like straight out of the gate, not interested, don't want to entertain it, don't want to learn it, don't want to understand it, don't want anything to do with it. I just want to give it to somebody else. They can do their magic and it gets done. Oh, Kerry, I hope you're enjoying your coffee, but I'm pretty sure that that's me that you're talking about. Oh, (laughs) I wasn't thinking about you, Kim. I I really wasn't. (laughs) I feel like for a very long time, I didn't understand finances at all. I didn't understand my position with them, my being in control of anything. I felt like it was something definitely outside of me. And I spent a long time looking for someone to just take that responsibility and do something with it for me because I felt like I had this whole list of reasons I couldn't do it myself. I wasn't smart enough. I didn't have enough time. I I couldn't learn it. Like all of these excuses really disqualified me from wanting to have control over my finances. And Carrie, I spent a long time looking for somebody to just do it. And Kim, I can relate to that in many ways. Firstly, because when I had my first business and had to play with the numbers, it wasn't my favorite thing to do. And I, did, I didn't feel smart enough. And I certainly didn't think that I was able to do it. There was a lot of self-doubt about being able to do it and do it well. And I proved myself right because I didn't do it well. However, these days I feel, and it's no surprise to hear these words come out of my mouth, but I feel that way about the words. Somebody else can just write that thing and someone else can do the blog and someone else can do the words on the website and oh there's a letter that needs to be put together I don't want to no not no and I would love to just palm that stuff off to someone else I know that sounds really horrible to put it that way but I do I do want to outsource the words however there's a piece of me on the inside going you know what I don't know if that's the right thing to do so I have had a lot of coffee with that and I'm still having a lot of coffee with that because I think I need to do it I think I'm like that little train I think I can I think I can I think I can (laughs) but I really don't want to I would love to just give it to someone else In 2022, I started sharing a special tool out to the universe that has since saved this community over $61,000. As your financial designer, I know what it feels like to find those random charges on your bank or credit card statement. If you want to get in control of your recurring payments, Simple Subscriptions is the free tool for you. Available on Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel using a simple four-step process. I host a live tour of Simple Subscriptions every quarter. It's completely free for you to attend and get this amazing tool. 
Let me show you how simple subscriptions can save you money and help you track your progress. To hang out with me in the virtual cafe, head over to kerryzarb.com to register for the next live tour. And while you're there, grab your free and private copy of Simple Subscriptions so you can get started on saving money. So can I challenge you with a question, Kerry, on this? Oh, I know you're going to. I don't think I've got a choice. <laughs> when somebody tells you what to do in any capacity, they come in and they start bossing you around and telling you, do this and do that, go, go clean your room like when you're little, or you have to do this, you have to do that. Is that the favorite feeling that you have? No. So I feel like this is one of those disconnected things in us as humans. Why is it we don't like being told what to do, yet we're waiting for that magical human that doesn't exist, by the way, to come in and do all the things for us, read our minds so that it's done exactly like we want it done. We don't have to learn it. We don't have to know it. We can leave our responsibility with someone else and then we expect a great outcome. I almost feel like it's a bad movie that you're watching when you're doing this for your own life. Because if somebody comes in and bosses me around, the first thing I think of is, there's no way I'm going to do what you say just because you say it. And yet, that's what I spent a long time looking for that person that would take over all of that, that financial stuff so I didn't have to be responsible and I didn't have to think about it. And Kim, that's, that's an interesting way to look at it. And I, I do feel, I feel that. I feel that in what I've just said about the words that I, if I don't want to deal with it and I don't want to get comfortable with it, then... I should be able to just give it to someone else and why can't I? But you're right, there is that element of responsibility, you know, as the business owner, and, and I have to say this out loud, I do feel that finances have a bit more importance than a blog. There is definitely that. And I, I like the ability to make the decisions in my business. So if I was to, and let's stay with the blog for a second, if I was to outsource the blog to someone else and not touch it at all and have nothing to do with it, what's going out there? What what would be the result of that? And I think that's what stops me making that decision to actually give it completely to someone else is what's the outcome? What what will the outcome be? So stick it with the blog for a second, Kiri. If somebody is taking a podcast, for example, because that's part of our process, if they're taking the podcast and they're using our voice to write a blog, they're doing it on our behalf. Mm -hmm. But we're the ones saying what we're saying on the podcast. We're the ones that are experienced or we learn something. Just because we don't write down those words doesn't mean that that's not our voice if that person does a good job with that outsourced thing. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way about finances that that we're talking about this blog. I need to be educated enough to understand and there's no reason I can't have help, but to delegate it does not take away my responsibility. And in my head all those years, that's what I felt like. I could delegate away my responsibility And that's the part that's not true. And that's the rub in this, Kim, because we can. We can. I could go tomorrow and outsource my blog. I could give someone the task to rewrite the words on my website and make it sound better and be more searchable and do all those fancy things with words that people do that I still don't understand. But when we're talking about finances, I do believe... If we don't have that base understanding, we need that base understanding to have that responsibility with us as the business owner. We need to know at least 
some bare basics of the finances to understand what the numbers mean. And I'm not saying we all need to run out and get accounting degrees and have all of the, the knowledge that those professionals do. However, without the base understanding, we're, we're going to be a little bit snookered when it comes to making decisions and being able to work with our numbers and do the right thing, be wise, be sensible in those spaces so that we can actually have a successful business financially. So can I use an example right now that's going on with our business and our life, Kiri? Yep. We have multiple projects going. That's common for us. We have multiple projects. But I am really on a determined path of finding out what each, what each of those projects cost so that I can compare the numbers to what the outcome is and see if we are putting our money where we should be putting our money. Like, to me, that's, I, I wish I could just say, you know, wave my magic wand and I would just know all those answers and I don't have to go through the painful part of, of hearing the numbers. I just want to know, want to know the final answer. But the truth is I'm responsible for how we're doing things. And that to me is one of the best examples in my life at this moment of me wanting to give that away and outsource that. But instead of completely outsourcing it where I don't have any control or don't have any responsibility, which never happens anyway, I feel like it's that who can I get to help me walk that out and who can I get to help me find those numbers versus just giving it away and not thinking about it anymore. And Kim, that's the interesting scenario because if we're keeping the responsibility and we have our finger on the pulse does not mean we have to be doing it. We don't have to be the doer in the business finances for them to be successful. If we've got the understanding of it, we're getting some help to bring it together. That's a that's a great position to be in. And, and I feel like that is the best position to be in because then you're not disconnected. Like you said, you still you still have that element of responsibility and that ownership. However, when it's not what we want to be doing, sometimes we can be much more valuable in our business by doing something else as well. So yeah, there's that we can level up in this space as we go when we first start our business and we're quite small use that time and be grateful for that time to be able to learn the finances so that when you're in a position to outsource it you've got that base behind you but by all means i i don't think anyone in business as we grow and our business grows we shouldn't be the doer in all the spaces forever no i like that carry a lot. I don't have to be the doer, but I do need to be the knower. Yeah. I need to know the things, but I don't have to do all of the things. I love that. Exactly. Well, Kim, I think we've spoken about this enough at this point. Um, I think it could resurface in a future episode with a, a little bit more detail, maybe from a different angle. And I think that's, that's a pretty good place to leave it, Kim. Well, Carrie, I'm going to get my coffee to go because I did not finish it. Definitely. My big old mocha latte, grande, extra, extra whip, caramel, all the things <laughs> in a big old cup to go. <laughs> well, Kim, thank you for hanging out with me in the virtual cafe. I will see you next week. Bye, Carrie. Bye, Kim. Thanks for joining us in the virtual cafe. You can follow the show to be notified of future episodes. And if you're enjoying this podcast, we encourage you to leave a rating or personal review. Until next time, happy biz beans to you. No beans were harmed during the production of this podcast. Information contained in this podcast should be taken as general advice only and your personal circumstances have not been taken into account. It is recommended that you seek financial advice from a professional who is licensed to do so. If you choose to act upon the general advice shared, you do so at your own